So here are all the words my word sort, and now I'm going to start to look around and try to see any sound patterns in them. For example, here in the word took, I can see there's a double vowel between two consonants, and the same up here. So I'm going to sort all the ones with a double vowel pattern. But as you can see, there's only five of them over here, and the rest are just a big jumble. So I need to go a little bit further with my sorting. So when I look at the words that didn't get sorted, I can see a pattern of a consonant and a vowel, the letter E at the end. So I'm going to sort them all into ones that end with the consonant and the vowel. And again, not too bad. I've got a slightly too big a pile. It's fairly cool. On this side, we've got ones that end in a consonant and the letter E. And over here, they're still a bit messed up. So what I can do now is I can think, well, I've also noticed in my pile of jumbles a CK ending. That doesn't fit into the double vowels or to the E at the end. So I can actually arrange these into three piles now. And here you can see now I've sorted them into this pile with the single vowel surrounded by consonants. Over here I have the consonant with the E at the end and the vowel in the middle. And over here we have the double vowels. So we're sorted. OK, now I can start to look at these words. And I noticed that, look, truck, kick, duck, pack, lick, they all seem to have the short vowel sound in them. Whereas over here, spoke, strike, smoke, take, these all have the long vowel sound. So I start to think, well, well, why is that? And what I can notice is that, well, when the E is on the end of the word, it makes the vowel long. But when it isn't at the end of the word, it makes the vowel short. So I kind of have a, the beginnings of a possible pattern here that might help me spell other words in the future. And so these ones over here, these are what we call the oddballs, because even though they are spelling patterns, they don't actually help me with the spelling pattern I've noticed. So here I'm going to sort these words by their spelling patterns. So I can see all of these words have a ch sound at the end, uh, but there are different ways. Some of them have a TCH at the end, like which, hutch, fetch, whereas some of them have just a CH ending, as exampled here by words such, rich, reach, and coach. So what I can do is I can sort them into those two different spelling patterns. So here on the left, you can see these are all the ones with the TCH ending. And over here, these are all the words with just the CH ending. And now what I can start to do is I can start to think, well, why is that? Why are they spelt differently? For example, over here, the CH, we can see there's a double vowel pattern that comes before the CH, as in coach, peach, roach, and teach, which gives the words their long vowel sound. Whereas in the other column with the TCH endings and the single vowels, we hear that they all have short vowel sounds. Hutch, fetch, which, and match. Now, down here, we can see these two don't quite fit in. They've got a CH ending, but a rich and such, they have a short vowel. So we can put them over here. Those are a couple of our oddballs. So here I have another example of the beginnings of a pattern that can help me with my future spelling. If I hear a short vowel in a CH word, then I can pretty much assume it's going to be a TCH ending. Although I do have to be careful because as the words such and rich show, there are exceptions to this rule. Whereas when I hear a long vowel sound, I can assume that it will be a CH ending, but then I need to think about which long vowels give me that sound. So once again, you can see that students are constructing their own generalizations about spelling patterns, which they'll obviously build on in the future. Another way that I can sort these is by meaning. So if I could look through these words and think, okay, what connections can I find because what do the words mean? For example, down here, I can find the word book. OK, I know a book. That's a thing. So let me see. Can I find other things? Yep, that's a thing. Oh, wait a second. Hmm, lock. That can be a thing, but it can also be something that I do, an action. Um, hmm. OK, so maybe I'll make a pile of ones that are actions and things over here, and then ones that are just actions and ones that are just things. And now I have them sorted into my categories. Over here, these are all action words or verbs. Over here, we've got the nouns. And then over here, we have words that can do both jobs. So here you can see we're getting a little bit more inquiry with our grammar. We're not just giving them the rules. We're helping them to construct their own rules for themselves. You can also do this as a sort of concept sort. For example, if you were starting a unit of inquiry with different vocabularies, uh, you could have the children sort those words into different categories as well, which helps them to tune into the topic that you are learning about.